Did you catch President Trump's New Year's resolution or did you miss it? Ignition, lift off. While New York was posturing with China and the European Union during the New Year's celebration, a major game change was about to take place, derailing something that has been in place for a very long time. Stage separation confirmed. And there is stage separation and second engine start. You can see that second engine on your right screen. The declassification of the NRO in 1999 revealed a back channel that gave the executive branch additional protections from potential coup operations stemming from the intelligence community, a hidden chain of command within the intelligence community and continuity of government structure at the president's disposal. 9-11 allowed a separate chain of command to set up, creating a more formidable deep state shadow government built around perpetual continuity of government national emergencies. We take the continuity of government issue very seriously. I have an obligation as the president, my administration has an obligation to the American people to, put, to provide, uh, put measures in place that should somebody be successful in an attack in Washington, D.C., there's an ongoing government. Within this shadow government chain of command is the alternative command and control that is carrying out a coup against President Trump. Other agencies, some within the intelligence community, are part of a counter coup operation. The deep state is aligned with globalization, the European Union, and certain other union deals with China, Russia, and the rest of the world. The counter coup operation is protecting America first policies, seeing globalization as a threat to American sovereignty. Operatives like John Brennan work towards globalization by merging national interests into international interests, merging intelligence gathering from a national security interest into an international interest outsourcing national intelligence to a privatized intelligence syndicate of overseas corporations. Insert Global Strategies Group. This shadow government would also have to have mechanisms, coups, assassinations, impeachments, etc. to protect itself in the event a real president gets elected and tries to eliminate or dismantle the deep state. For the president to get around the coup, for a counter coup to be successful, an alternative chain of command had to be set up. Notice Trump staying in Mar-a-Lago. Notice the White House has been being redecorated. A little debugging, perhaps. And then there was this. Tension rods released and payload deploy confirmed. Oh yeah. The day before World War III was supposedly breaking out, Space Force launched a curious payload that coincidentally went directly over Ukraine, Turkey, and Iraq. Of all places, just hours before the Iranian missile attack launched. For President Trump to get around the deep state coup operation, he had to create Space Force a public face to a more OG back channel designed to protect the interests of the United States and the president from the intelligence community, AKA swamp creature number one. Not only was there a perceived versus actual situation versus a continuity of government alternative situation, but an even deeper than that magical situation. Several tells exist in the public that point this out. 17 intelligence agencies supposedly signed off on the 2016 Russia election interference story. We have 17, 17 intelligence agencies, civilian and military, who have all concluded that these espionage attacks, these cyber attacks come from the highest levels of the Kremlin and they are designed to influence our election. This turned out to be false, and the mainstream media had to issue retractions and fire people, remember? 
As you know, the IC was a coordinated product from three agencies, CIA, NSA, and the FBI, not all 17 components of the intelligence community. Only the CIA, FBI, and NSA went along with this Russia election interference story. Not to forget, these same three agencies also went along with the false yellow cake excuse to go to war with Iraq. Remember that one? Saddam Hussein recently sought significant quantities of uranium from Africa. We know it was a danger. First, if there really was foreign interference in the election, then why didn't the Department of State's Bureau of Intelligence and Research provide a footnote? Second, why wasn't the Defense Intelligence Agency involved? Why wasn't the National Intelligence Council involved? All of these are signs that there was nothing there. By the way, the FBI is not an intelligence agency. They really are law enforcement, so only two intelligence agencies were actually involved in the Russia collusion story, the CIA and the NSA. If the Russia collusion story was real, there would have been footnotes from every intelligence agency involved. And since we don't have any footnotes, well, we know it's fake. But if it's fake, why didn't the other 15 intelligence agencies make public statements? Because they would have had to unmask themselves to do so. <laughs> Most of these other agencies gather information only, not conduct law enforcement. So if the DOJ has its hands tied up or is corrupt, then all these guys can do is sit with their mouths shut watching everything happen in slow motion with their top secret Q clearances caught in a wedge. Hence, Space Force. By creating an additional branch of the military, Trump now has remedy, and it sure has pissed off the establishment. Today, we will make history. When we walk down, when the managers walk down the hall, we will cross a threshold in history delivering articles of impeachment against the President of the United States for abuse of power and obstruction of the House. I said the President has a New Year's resolution, a resolution to our Middle East problem. President Trump is a great dealmaker, uh, by his own account and, and many others. Let's, let's work together to replace the JCPOA okay. and get the Trump deal instead. To set up a new back channel in the Middle East, the Trump administration had to remove the old ones that stood in the way, those that played a key role in laundering U.S. foreign aid, those that supplied weapons to proxies, terrorists, and militant groups, those that help Iran get around sanctions, and those that were a threat to U.S. personnel, allies, and assets. Then it started. Uh, the Internet Intel Group of Oracle. He commented, he said that this was something that he hadn't seen before, saying that this was arguably the largest of ever event for Iran when it comes to internet dropping. There was an interesting internet blackout cutting off certain intelligence assets in the region from being able to use the internet. Cloudflare, they noted their own data and they said that it shut down progressively by service providers on November 16th. Usually, like, you know, me personally, I use WhatsApp or, you know, even Skype or some of these other apps like Viber, but all of these apps are not, you know, people can't access them right now. Forcing them to use satellite communications. Then the internet came back on with new security protocols set up, AKA the deep state just got cut off from communication with local operations because some, you know, what was about to kick off. New Year's Eve, thousands of pro-Iran protesters stormed the U.S. Embassy in Baghdad. The next day, Iraqi forces, along with U.S. Marines, worked together to secure the area and disperse the protest. On Thursday night, General Qasem Soleimani, a high-profile Iranian general, is killed by a U.S. airstrike at Baghdad International Airport. Soleimani led the Quds Force under Iran's Revolutionary Guard, which is widely believed to support terrorist groups. This is why the media, some Democrats, and some hawkish Republicans escalated the public response to the situation with hysteria, believing that either World War III was about to kick off as a result of Trump killing Soleimani, or that the U.S. needed to retaliate militarily to Iran's missile attack. There will be a revenge. There will be a harsh revenge. But when and how and aimed at which targets? 
And the White House? We will respond. Amid the escalating tensions, the U.S. is deploying thousands more troops. The deep state knew they were about to lose control of their assets in Iran and that Trump was setting up a new back channel that excluded their intelligence networks. Chuck Schumer aides tell me he didn't get a heads up about this before it happened, neither did other top leaders. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi condemned the president's actions. And all of this is unfolding in the middle of the debate over the president's impeachment trial in the Senate. The president wanted to distract from his impending impeachment with a military strike, taking out a quote unquote bad guy in the Middle East. We're just getting reports now that a second wave of rocket, launch, rocket attacks have been launched. We're just getting a statement from Iran's Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps saying that it, it has hit the U.S. Uh, uh, Ain al-Assad air base in Iraq. He was saying that Ayatollah Khamenei, the supreme leader of this country, was in the control center coordinating these attacks with what they described as tens of missiles. This according to Press TV, an urgent banner on Iranian television. 30 U.S. soldiers have been killed in this attack. Now, this is not confirmed. This is just coming from Iranian media. We could be on the brink of a major conflict across the Middle East. But we have just uh, stepped over the precipice, Chris. Uh, we have entered a very unpredictable time. We have to see what the response is going to be from the United States. This is wag the dog right in front of our faces, right? But then one of our really good sources got a hold of us and we watched the hysteria unfold on Twitter as something else magical appeared to happen in the background. Apparently these are old photos. Look at all these missiles that didn't detonate. Hmm. We happened to be watching live time the flight tracker in the area, noting that at the same time as the alleged missile attack, there was also a lot of air traffic along the Iranian-Iraqi border. What the heck? How could World War III be breaking out, missiles flying everywhere, U.S. troops being deployed, people dying everywhere? Meanwhile, international flights are unimpeded? Come on. We're just getting a statement from Iran's Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps. Wag the dog much, CNN? Notice this big X marks the spot, no-go zone in the middle? Our attention was drawn to an aircraft that stood out. For the first time tonight, this. What appears to be the moment that 737 is hit by a missile. The American intelligence community is confident, a U.S. official confirms to ABC, that Iran turned on a radar aimed at the jetliner, which would guide anti-aircraft missiles from a mobile launcher. A U.S. satellite then captured the firing of two missiles at the 737, which was less than 5,000 feet off the ground. The warheads of those missiles would explode near the aircraft, blowing into bits of shrapnel that would pierce the aircraft in multiple locations. The evidence indicates that the plane was shot down by an Iranian surface-to-air missile. We were given a list of passengers aboard the aircraft. Our attention was drawn to several names of individuals who worked with a particular company, very similar to Global Strategies Group. In Tetix, outsourcing operations during political instability, current business climate in Ukraine, and beyond. Wow, based on this company's online profile, they were the perfect people for managing the kind of crisis that was unfolding and the kind of continued crisis, one that would have gone expected had the situation gone the way the media said it was. Oh wait, the plane they were on happened to be shot down by the IRGC. So I guess we will never know why so many Canadian, Ukrainian, Iranian dissidents, private intelligence assets, field operators, and contractors were fleeing on a flight to the Ukraine so quickly after a failed attempt by someone at escalating a war between Iran and the United States. I don't know about you, but I don't think I'd be hopping onto an aircraft, going to Ukraine of all places, fleeing a war zone right after missiles were being launched. Just saying. Unless you knew if you stuck around, they were likely going to find out that you were behind something nefarious and you needed to get out of Dodge. Right? I mean, if staying was worse than trying to flee, <laughs> then maybe you'd want to flee during a missile launch. 
Needless to say, when the smoke cleared, the Iranians wanted to de-escalate and declared their retaliation over. A straight up white flag for all intent and purposes. DEFCOM and other military command centers tweeted out to ignore the hysteria. Iran was no longer a threat and we were at DEFCOM level 5. It was as though the whole thing was a drill. And in a way, it was because it allowed us to see who the real fake news media was. This is Wag the Dog right in front of our faces, right? But it also served as cover while a new command and control system was set up. The way we found this out, we'll never tell anybody because it was magical and we're not going to compromise it. And the deep state shadow government was cut off from its biggest Middle East proxy, Iran. There's anger at the government on the streets in Tehran. Pockets of protest after Iran's military admitted it accidentally shot down a civilian plane. Listeners and viewers love BrainForce Plus. It's got a whole list of known clean compounds in nature that give you clean, focused, what I call mental stamina. It's easy if you've got to work at night and you've been up 16 hours to drink a bunch of coffee, but it stops working after a while. In fact, at night, coffee makes me sleepy. BrainForce Plus does not make me sleepy, regardless of when I take it, and it doesn't have a crash. That's why people take it and they can't believe how amazing it is. Now, that said, it's our number one bestseller. We sell the most of it. But when we came out with this like five years ago, I looked at some of the leading brands and I looked at their markup five to seven times. So they were selling for 80 bucks retail, what they were probably putting, you know, five, six dollars a product in. And I said, we're not gonna do that. We're gonna put even more product in it, retail it at 29.95 and then have it even less. And that's what we've done. So we don't make a lot of money on it, but we sell a ton of it and people love it. Now, I was talking to the developers and we were looking at a lot of the other big top sellers out there. And, you know, obviously that's turmeric. So we went and said, well, what's the best turmeric? Well, it's this turmeric extract. It's got the highest ratings. Nobody ever goes above 80%. The average turmeric's 5% being sold out there. This curcuminoid's 95%. And there's major studies that turmeric works better than, you know, Prozac type drugs for depression. And, and, and I'm not billing it as that. I'm just saying that's the power of mother nature. Well, let's talk about chill force, ladies and gentlemen. This came out six months ago. It's got 97, 98% reviews, but it's not a big seller. And I was gonna call it Zen Force because this isn't a depressant. This is the very best known from science, known from other nature, known from the ancients, fused with modern science and information, a system that gives you clean, focused, calm clarity. And so you can sleep on this but it's not something that makes you sleepy. So it's not like Knockout that's got eight known natural compounds that, that make you really sleepy and work great all together synergistically. My idea, check with scientists, is totally safe and people people love it and they say it's the best sleep aid they've ever tried. Good clean sleep as well. So you need to go read about Chill Force. You need to see what's in it. Stress levels have surpassed all time highs. Anxiety rates are off the charts no matter what side of the political spectrum you're on. You can feel it. The effects are real. Over time, chronic stress can contribute to heart disease, high blood pressure, insomnia, sexual dysfunction, and so much more. I take Chill Force every morning. I really need to because I'm already so hyped up. And I went in just last week and had a, a, a yearly checkup and they said, You've got the blood pressure of a marathon runner. Last time you came in, I guess it was two years ago, it wasn't nearly check up, it, it was a little high. So, I mean, I'm telling you folks, it's what I'm doing is working and it can work for you as well and support the info war. Ashwagandha root extract, an ancient medicinal herb used for over 3,000 years to treat stress and relax the patient. L-theanine, a special amino acid naturally found in tea leaves. The compound has been called the stress killer because of its powerful relaxation benefits. GABA, an important neurotransmitter that controls functions of the body and mind, including nervous system relaxation. GABA is a choice to help many get support in natural systems in reaching a state of tranquility. We should call it, almost called it tranquility based. Uh, Roadolia, rosa root extract, it goes into the super adaptation, what it does for stress and how good it is for you. And it does so much more. You got to go read the reviews about it. You got to find out how great Chill Force is or you're really missing out. Chill Force.